College's ninth president, Mr. Kevin, Kevin Shufflebotham. Please rise as the platform party enters and remain standing for the national anthem, which will be performed by Kaylee Seitz. Thank you. You may all take your seats. Allow me now to please introduce your platform party. And I'm going to start with uh, our new president, Kevin Shufflebotham, if you would give us a little wave and perhaps all of you as your name is called. Peter LeClaire, Assistant Deputy Minister, Advanced Education. His Worship, Ted Clugston, Mayor, City of Medicine Hat. Molly Douglas, Reeve, County of Mill. Dr. Glenn Feltham, President, Northern Alberta Institute of Technology. Graham Kelly, Chair, Medicine Hat College Board of Governors. Mohammed Idris, Vice Chair of the Board of Governors. Davin Carter, Public Member. Petra Maraha, Public Member. Pat Cox, Public Member. Jade Kent, Non-Academic Member. Dr. Diane Gall, Academic Member. Dalton Erie, student member and president of the Students Association. Wayne Resch, vice president, finance and administration. Dr. Terry Chapman, interim vice president, academics. David Pettis, vice president, advancement, community relations. Orlando Price, associate vice president, student development. Dr. Elizabeth Pennefeather O'Brien, dean, division of science and health. Dennis Bodwin, unfortunately can't be with us today, the dean of trades and technology. Sandy Henderson, registrar. Janice Kirshner, President, Medicine Hat College Faculty Association, and Lana West, Chair, Alberta Union of Public Employees. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. We are also delighted to share today with members of Kevin's family and friends who are visiting to provide their support and congratulations. On behalf of all of us, welcome to the campus, to the college and the community. It is my honor now to invite Chastity Karen with the Miwasan Friendship Center to the podium. Chastity. Good afternoon. Um, I would like to start with um, an honor, uh, honor and acknowledgement of the lands. Um, so. 
we honor and acknowledge that we are situated on Treaty 7 and Treaty 4 territory. Uh, traditional lands of the Siksika, Blackfoot tribe, Kainai, the Blood tribe, um, Pikani, uh, the Pagan tribe, Stony, Nakoda tribe, and Satina, Darcy, as well as the Cree, Sioux, and the Soto bands of the Ojibwe peoples. We also honor and acknowledge that we are on the homelands of the Métis Nation of Alberta within Region 3 territory. So I'm just going to ask um, my brother David here to do start with a prayer. My name is Eagle with Peace Prize. Uh, I'm a... Uh, Income tax name is David Rescue. <laughs> uh, I'm the new Indigenous specialist here at the college. I got to meet uh, our wonderful new president uh, uh, in the hiring process. I'm very honored to, to be starting a new journey with you. And um, so Chastity asked me to do a, uh, a opening prayer. So I'm just going to do that. Uh, um, I don't know it all in the language, so I'm just going to do it in English. Uh, I'm going to ask the grandmothers and grandfathers that uh, sit in the Western doorway come be with us here today uh, to do this in a good way, to start this off in a good way, and uh, the grandmothers and grandfathers in the southern direction to come and be with us here today to uh, invite our new president on this new journey, and uh, the grandmothers and grandfathers in the western doorway to be with us here today to keep this uh, beautiful event in, uh, in balance, and uh, our grandmothers and grandfathers that sit in the uh, northern doorway to come and be with us here today. And also uh, to the Creator, Gitche Manitou, Great Spirit, and Mother Earth to be with us uh, in this uh, beautiful event and uh, that we can do this in a good way. And also the winds of the four directions and all the other parts of creation that I didn't mention, uh, that we're all here in balance and we're here for the next seven generations to come. Aho, miigwech. Okay, so Tanze Anin, Tan Shioki. Bonjour. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so I just want to introduce myself because probably a lot of you don't know who I am. Uh, my name is Red Hawk Woman. I'm also known as Chastity Cairns. I wear many hats in our community. I am a cultural addiction counselor at Miawson Friendship Centre, uh, president of the Miawson Aboriginal Women's Society, and secretary of Métis Nation of Alberta Local 8. So I'm very proud to be an alumni of Medicine Hat College. Um, social work diploma program, and I also received my bachelor's of social work here at the college uh, through the Learning Circles route with University of Calgary Faculty of Social Work. Um, so I really love Medicine Hat College. Um, for four years of my life, I spent more time in the library um, than I did at home. I pretty much lived in the library here, and I absolutely love it. And um, it's an honor and a true blessing to be amongst all of you all today, um, and this is a special day. Uh, I got to meet Kevin earlier on when he first came to the community. Um, he came, uh, Jeanette, our executive director, said, I, I have a group in our community, uh, Bannock and Tea, uh, men's group, and she says, oh, the new president is coming. Um, you got coffee on? Did you make Bannock? <laughs> so I was like, what? I hope it turned out good. Oh, and it's so, uh, I was so pleased to meet him. I was kind of nervous, um, but, you know, he's such a kind, um, kind, he's good-hearted. I just got really good energy from him. So I'm really glad, I'm um, looking forward to our future partnerships with him or in Medicine Hat College. Um, so I just wanted to touch base a little bit about um, elders and scholars, uh, Indigenous scholars, talk about um, education as a new buffalo. Um, so what that means is uh, back in the day um, when our people were on the land, the buffalo was everything to us. It was our food, it was our housing, um, it was, uh, we made clothing out of it, it was everything. And so um, today for survival for our people, um, education is the new provider. So, you know, um, it's really important for us to have that partnership with Medicine Hat College um, as well. Uh, moving forward, um, Miawson Friendship, Se Friendship Center uh, partnered with Medicine Hat College for our annual Healing and Reconciliation Week and various other events in the past. 
Um, we'd like to continue that. And um, we look forward to future partnership and hope to support um, each other walking forward in a good way. Um, so today we are, um, the Indigenous Community of Medicine Hat are here today to present to Kevin uh, three gifts from three different organizations. Um, so if I could get Kevin to come up. Um, so I have our Vice President and Treasurer of Miasan Aboriginal Women's Society. So Miasan Aboriginal Women's Society um, is an organization in our community. It's actually a group of women, um, Indigenous and non-Indigenous, um, wanting to learn our culture so that we don't lose that. Um, every time we have a meeting, we have a knowledge keeper come in and teach us something uh, about medicines, about um, different parts of our culture and so that we don't lose that and so that we can pass that on to others. So I have Carly Eagle Plume here. Um, she's from Kainai First Nations. She is also our youth coordinator at Medicine Hat Friendship Center. Um, so she's going to present to you um, a beaded pouch that was made from one of our Métis elders and uh, she comes in to do teachings uh, for beading uh, at Miawson Friendship Center and very lovely lady and her family has a lot of history here in, in um, Medicine Hat, uh, different like generations. And um, so we also like uh, Wally Garrick, <laughs> sorry. It sounds, his name when you read it, it looks French, but it's, I guess it's Scottish. Wrong thing to say, right? Um, so uh, he's, uh, on behalf of Métis Nation of Alberta Local Aid, we're presenting uh, the Métis, or the Miawson Samus Sash. So this is, um, <laughs> so as he's putting it around his waist, so as you can see, I'm wearing mine around my shoulder. Um, so men and women wear them different. Um, so what the, the Miawson Samus Sash means is good medicine in Korean Blackfoot. The colors are significant to our area and come, um, come from the colors of the Samus teepee. The blue is flowing water, the red for rising and setting of the sun, the white for the teepee and the new fallen snow. And the colors interwoven in the center, green, yellow, black, red, and blue represent the Olympic spirit, where the Samus teepee originated at the 88 Winter Olympics in Calgary and represents all flags of the world. Yeah. Okay, and then, so moving on, um, on behalf of Miawson Friendship Center, uh, we have a blanket, um, Pendleton blanket. So I just wanted to explain a little bit about what the Pendleton blanket means. Um, so Curtis McAdam is an Indigenous knowledge keeper. So when the Creator first gave us life to be on Earth, we did a lot of traveling. Some of the spirit animals said, because of what you're going through, I'm going to give you a piece of my hide a piece of meat to use. Take it from my children when you go hunting. Use that and wrap it around yourself. Then the buffalo said, to help wrap it around you, use my children. Then the rock spirit said, to help you hold it down, use my children. Then the sun spirit said, to help you warm your home and your family, use my children. That is a TP story. So it's a story of uh, the blanket. The traditional use began with the gift of the teepee, and eventually the buffalo hide became our blanket. But it, it's just one blanket story. There are many, each with a unique meaning, as each First Nation culture, um, First Nations has different teachings. Um, so that's the Cree. And when we gift a blanket, it's tied to a story. It's a symbol of taking the creator's gifts and wrapping them around someone. It ties back to the stories of the moose hide, buffalo hide, and deer hide. Each has a si significant meaning. Um, modern blanket, as the Pendleton blanket that we're going to be presenting today, are symbols of that tradition. But it's not the material that we're gifting a person. It's mimicking what the spirits do. It's a reminder of what the Creator has intended for us. Um, so over time, the blankets were added to the list of goods, and the Indigenous communities would gift each other, one another. The gifting of a blanket at its core is an act of honoring and showing respect to people who have contributed to the common good. So on behalf of Miawson Friendship Center, our cultural coordinator, uh, Brenda Mercer, and um, <laughs> Carly Eagle Plume, I can't believe I forgot her name. 
But anyways, um, we're going to present him today with his blanket. Congratulations. Thank you. Chastity, elders, friends, thank you ever so much for your participation and support today. We look forward to continued partnership with you. Mr. Graham Kelly, chair of the college board, will now bring greetings on behalf of the province. Mr. Kelly. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for, uh, for being here. Uh, I've been asked to extend greetings to uh, Kevin on behalf of the elected officials, uh, Premier Kenny, Honorable Demetrius Nicolaides, the Minister of Advanced Education, uh, Drew Barnes, the MLA for Cyprus, Medicine Hat, and Michaela Glasgow, the MLA for Brooks, Medicine Hat, as they are unable to attend today's celebration as the Legislative Assembly is currently in session. They offer their sincere congratulations to Kevin and to Medicine Hat colleagues on this momentous occasion. I would like to acknowledge that Peter LeClaire, Assistant Deputy Minister, Advanced Learning and Community uh, Partnerships Division for Alberta Advanced Education is with us today. Thank you, Peter, for joining us for our installation ceremony. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. Speak on behalf of the city is His Worship, Ted Clexton, Mayor of Medicine Hat. Well, good afternoon. It's uh, great to see so many people out here on this beautiful June day. Um, I also see uh, one of my uh, counselors. It's, it's, we're, we're blind up here, just so you know. Um, but I think I see one of my counselors and my CAO in the office, and uh, Counselor Hirsch was the former chair of, of the college, so, so welcome as well. So, uh, so welcome, uh, new college president, but I guess we're calling you Kevin, probably because your last name is so hard to say, so <laughs> I'll just, we'll just go with Kevin. Um, and uh, I'm going to tell you the same thing that I told your predecessor, and what I told uh, Denise was, um, you just won the lottery. Um, you are now uh, a resident of Medicine Hat, and you get to live in Medicine Hat and be part of something special uh, influ influencing the future of our city and our community. Yes, no, it wasn't a monetary a win, but it is a life win. And I've already had the opportunity of attending uh, a few events and conversations with our new president, Kevin, and I have found him to be uh, full of energy, willing to listen, and actually uh, uh, willingness to roll up his sleeves and get to work. He's already made Medicine Hat his home and is integrating into the fabric of the community. He has already chosen to set down roots and is doing his best to meet as many members of the community uh, as possible. So congratulations and thank you for doing that. Um, Medicine Hat College is such an integral part of, of Medicine Hat, more so maybe now than ever. And I'm willing to bet that I'm here maybe two or three times every month. Uh, and many of the events that I attend here are related to community building. They're not just the traditional or what education that you might think. And the c college is truly influencing the direction of our youth and also our young at heart. And, and this is really a great responsibility, which I know that you don't take lightly. Um, and I'd also be remiss to point out some of the partnerships that are even going on between the city of Medicine Hat and the college and, and various uh, partners uh, regarding technology. You can see the new blue solar wind uh, turbines on, on the campus uh, going up here. Um, so we're doing some research in renewable energy. So Medicine Hat College now more than ever is an economic driver for this community and a place to exchange ideas and knowledge. 
In this ever-changing world, we need a dynamic and vibrant post-secondary in institution. So on behalf of myself and the rest of my city council, we are all here for you, and you, I hope, will be here for, for us. So congratulations. Now, I did a little poll before, <laughs> and uh, as to whether or not I should do this, um, uh, sorry for those of you that have had to suffer through my poetry, <laughs> but Kevin hasn't had to yet. So um, uh, I would like to do a poem, and this is kind of an education poem, so um, uh, as to how to be perhaps a great leader. And um, it was written by Rudyard Kipling, and as you maybe well know, uh, Kipling had a fondness for the city of Medicine Hat, of course, giving our name all hell for a basement and, and helping us preserve the name Medicine Hat when some previous politicians thought we should change it to something like Brown Town or Gas Town or something like that. So um, Kipling is also, as you know, uh, wrote The Jungle Book, but he is perhaps most famous for writing the poem If, um, and it is still to this day, it's about almost 100 years old, and it's still as relevant, and if not more relevant today, than it was when he first wrote it, and is still recognized in the UK as the greatest uh, British uh, uh, poem. If you can keep your head when all around you are losing theirs and blaming it on you, if you can trust yourself when all men doubt you, make allowance for their doubting too. If you can wait and not be tired by waiting and being lied about, don't deal in lies. And being hated, don't give way to hating. And do not look too good, nor talk too wise. If you can dream without making dreams your master, if you can think without making thoughts your aim, if you can meet with triumph and disaster and treat those two imposters just the same, if you can bear to see the... <laughs> Your life's work goes <laughs> dead. If you can bear to see the, oh boy, I've never forgotten this one before. <laughs> if you can meet with triumph and disaster and treat those two posters the same. If you can bear to see your work, okay, sorry. Um, I'm going to move on to the next uh, thing. Um, uh, okay, I'm going to just move. If you can walk with crowds and maintain your virtue, or walk with kings, nor lose the common touch. If neither foes nor loving friends can hurt you, if all men count with you, but none too much. If you could take and fill the unforgiving minute with 60 seconds worth of distance, run. Yours is the earth and everything that's in it. And, which is more, to be a man, my son. And I'm sorry that the gender is all male on that, but that's how it was originally written. And uh, I don't believe in changing the words. So thank you. Welcome to Medicine Hat. Thank you, Your Worship. Our next welcome is from Newell County. Please join me in asking Molly Douglas Reeve to come to the podium. Wow, those are some hard acts to follow. Ted, I'm impressed. I'm a former, I always go to say old, but former uh, language arts English teacher. So I'm impressed, especially when it's a boy. And it's funny how I could say that, you, you know, yeah, I can get away with it. I am just um, so impressed with everyone who has come to this mic already today that I'd sort of like to go home and start all over again on my speech. Chastity, that was beautiful. I spent a lot of my career in Bazano School and so grew very familiar with this explanation and um, just loved everything you had to say. Beautiful prayer, the income tax name I love. <laughs> I think we all should have an income tax name. Um, Ted mentioned that Kevin has had a life win coming to Madison Hat, and I would like to just expand that a little bit further and say coming to southeastern Alberta, I think uh, Kevin has had a win, certainly. Anyhow, you're getting off lucky today because there's only two politicians here. Thank goodness the unimportant MP and MLAs are in session working. They do actually work, not like Ted and I, who are the municipal government level, who slave away and have to meet you on the street every day and listen to all of the compliments that we give, of course. Okay. 
I have to say I've never been to an installation before. I've had things installed in my house, like air conditioners <laughs> and carpets. And so when uh, I mentioned, I was so happy to, I was visiting with Kevin and he said he'd never been to an installation before either. So, <laughs> okay, let's get serious. <laughs> Good afternoon to everyone gathered here on this special occasion of the installation of Kevin as Medicine Hat College's ninth president. The significance of this occasion can be seen by the impressive attendance of the dignitaries here, but even more so by you, a warm, welcoming community with many educational supporters who understand the value of Medicine Hat College as an institution within our southeast area. I'm honored to be here as the Reeve of the County of Newell. By the way, a Reeve is just like a mayor, but we're of a rural area usually. So I'm here as the Reeve of the County of Newell and as well to represent all of the communities within our boundaries, which includes the villages of Rosemary and Duchess, the town of Bazano and the city of Brooks. Medicine Hat College's Brooks campus, of course, is located in our region and as such plays an important role in not only post-secondary education, but also in the advancement of a wide range of free employment skills setting students up for further successes. It is gratifying to know that our incoming president, Kevin, is already familiar with our Brooks region and has indeed spent time visiting with some of us. Um, Kevin spent, we had a nice lunch with Kevin a few weeks ago, the, the mayor, Barry Morchita, of the city of Brooks and I, and that was great. So Kevin has indeed spent time visiting with some of us recently to learn more which is always a necessary step in understanding and focusing on what real needs are. All of us who live in southeastern Alberta know its strengths, along with the strengths of our diverse population. Our incredible industries of agriculture and irrigation, a wide range of types of energy production with all the spin-off support and inventive ideas that have resulted, such unique tourism attractions, varied businesses from the military base to the beef packing and meat packing industry, many specialty crops, one of which is marijuana, and that is just a few items on the list of what makes us viable and sustainable and provides a solid foundation on which to move forward. Mixed within all of these strengths is our education system, of which Kevin has taken on a lead role at Medicine Hat College, working with all of our community and of course his staff, students, and his college's board of governors. As we look forward to collaboration and communication with Kevin, and on behalf of our Newell and Brooks region, I extend our support and congratulations on his installation as president of Medicine Hat College, and of course, the Brooks campus. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Douglas. Students are at the heart of everything we do at the college and of course, part of this ceremony. Mr. Dalton Erie will bring greetings on behalf of the student body. Thanks, Mark. Good afternoon. It's a pleasure to be here. As, presence of, as president of the Students Association, I am honored to take the stage today to speak on behalf of the students who choose Medicine Hat College. Our students are diverse. The word student does not simply define a single person, but rather an entire unique community of individuals who are connected in their pursuit of knowledge. The population is dynamic and evolving, representing different cultures, nationalities, ages, and life experiences. As the voice of these students for both Medicine Hat and Brooks campuses, the Students Association values the strong relationship that exists with the Medicine Hat College executive team. Having the opportunity to be connected with college leaders on various boards and committees allows us to advocate on behalf of our students to ensure that their needs and interests are at the forefront of decision making. Kevin, your genuine passion for student success and the commitment to the community will only strengthen that relationship. The Students Association is excited to work with you as we continue to build a culture of inclusion and enhance the student experience at Medicine Hat College. 
Wellness and a multifaceted approach continues to be our top priority, and we know that a healthy and happy campus starts with us. This is a time of transition here on campus and across our province, and I feel confident in saying that the entire student body is looking forward to the opportunities we will have to pursue together uh, in the future. On behalf of the students of Medicine at College, I offer my sincerest welcome to you. Thank you, Dalton. Mr. Sandy Henderson, the College Registrar, will now provide a welcome on behalf of all of us to devote our time and talents to the institution. Sandy. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's great to see so many people have come here to celebrate today. It's an exciting day. Uh, it truly is my pleasure on behalf of the employees of Madison Hat College to welcome Kevin Shufflebotham as our new president. As many of you know, I've had the chance to uh, work with Kevin in the past, so I was asked to share some thoughts here today. Uh, I first met Kevin about 10 years ago uh, when he joined the Alberta government. Um, for four years, we both dutifully reported to the 11th floor of Commerce Place in downtown Edmonton. Uh, and when we worked in uh, for the Advanced Education Ministry. So when it was announced that Kevin would be our new president, uh, people came to me for the inside scoop. <laughs> so you worked with Kevin before, right? What do you think about him, really? <laughs> so what I told them is some of the things you've probably already seen here from his time at Madison Hat College. He's very approachable. He likes to laugh. He's enthusiastic and energetic and one of those people you just want to be around. Kevin also understands that people in relationships are what really matter and is committed to encouraging them. Kevin's career has been focused in Alberta's post-secondary sector. His experience and his passion for this work will, in my opinion, serve Madison Hat College's students, employees, and communities in a transformational way. When I left government to come to Madison Hat College about four years ago, I reached out to Kevin to ask him for some advice about making the move from government to an institution as he had transitioned back to McEwen University a, a few years earlier. I knew we both had family connections to Madison Hat as our wives both grew up here. I remember him saying to me, you're going to Madison Hat? Oh, I'd love to be there. <laughs> well, Kevin, you're here now. <laughs> it's only been a couple of months, but I don't think anyone could doubt your enthusiasm for this college and the communities we serve. Kevin, we look forward to your leadership as we continue to build on our foundation of student success, building and support the building of this region, and encouraging our dedicated employees. I'm sure there will be challenges along the way, but our opportunities are great. And with you at the helm, MHC will do amazing things. And I think we're going to have some fun along the way, too. So once again, on behalf of the employees of Massanac College, welcome, Kevin. Enjoy the celebration. Thank you, Sandy. Well, as you've just heard, uh, Kevin is joining us after a long career in government and also in some of Edmonton's most dynamic post-secondary institutions. Please welcome Dr. Glenn Feltham, President and CEO of, of MOVE. It's not just accessorizing. Honored guests, Board of Governors, Kevin and Corinne, and your family and friends. Uh, I am truly honored to say a few words of introduction about Kevin Shufflebotham. Uh, I could tell you about his many accomplishments, but I would prefer to talk about the person. Let me start by saying how truly blessed Medicine Hat College, your community, and our province are to have Kevin assume the role of president. Kevin is one of the most caring and passionate leaders in all of post-secondary. He cares about learners, colleagues, and community. He cares about others and their thoughts and opinions. Let me discuss a bit more about Kevin's values and how it is that he leads. 
In Leaving Nate, Kevin wrote about lessons learned. I believe that these lessons and beliefs will define his presidency at Medicine Hat College. So in Kevin's words, these lessons were to be humble, the value of listening, the importance of being authentic, to celebrate when people do amazing things, as well as small things, that it's okay to sing out loud, well, even poorly, that friendships are truly forever, the importance of speaking your truth, to talk to the person sitting in the corner of the room, that leadership matters, to let others shine, that you can never communicate too much, that what we do matters, to help others see their own strengths and to believe in themselves, and finally, to believe in yourself. This, in short, is Kevin. He will bring these principles and lessons to Medicine Hat College in all it is that he does. In accepting this position, Kevin told me just how much it meant to him and to his very, very special wife, Corinne, to return to Medicine Hat. He believes in this community and the incredible institution that is Medicine Hat College. He sees nothing but opportunity for the college and the community. He loves both and believes in both. These are Kevin's belief or beliefs, but let me give you, well, some more insights into the man. Let me highlight four things that you may not know about Kevin. <laughs> First, let me start with Kevin's culinary sophistication. In a tour of educational institutions, industry, and innovation spaces across Europe, we drove through eight countries in seven days. Kevin brought scientific curiosity and rigor to a culinary task to sample and compare Big Macs across all of Europe. <laughs> And we were assured by Kevin that there were, in fact, differences. <laughs> My second insight into the man relates to fashion. <laughs> For those who know Kevin, you know that he is most comfortable when in Birkenstocks. A very fashion-forward statement, I've been told. <laughs> Third, you know, we all have our likes and dislikes, Kevin's personal kryptonite is heights. Kevin does not like heights. He really, really, really does not like heights. It's almost sucian. Uh, but in true Kevin fashion, he faces and overcomes his fears. On our trip through Europe, uh, Kevin walked over catwalks several stories high, and we took a gondola ride over the Italian Alps that went on, well, forever. Kevin was, well, more than a little green, uh, but he didn't bow out. He owned it. In fact, it's my observation that Kevin never backs down from challenges, but rather embraces them and becomes even stronger through these challenges. Finally, as noted earlier, Kevin is fueled by a passion for people and for community, but he's also fueled by two other things. <laughs> Red licorice and blue whales. <laughs> Kevin, this should see you through a week. <laughs> I chatted with Kevin yesterday and he asked me how my introduction was coming. Uh, in fact, I'd only written down a few words, but I wasn't concerned. The reason I wasn't concerned is I am such a big believer in an unabashed fan of the subject, which is Kevin Shufflebottom. Kevin, you are an amazing leader. You are an even better person. Medicine uh, at College in Alberta are truly blessed to have you, and I am blessed to have you as a friend. I wish you every, every success. 
and know that you are going to make us all very, very proud. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We will now begin the ceremonial gown. Mr. Graham Kelly, Chair of the Board of Governors, and Dr. Cherry Chapman, Vice President Academic, will provide Mr. Shufflebotham with a gown and hood re representing his degree in the institution from which he graduated. Would you please come forward? And just uh, as a point, to a point of history, uh, the academic regalia has a, a very long history. The practice, we're told, began centuries ago when students wore gowns of wool in the unheated school, and it continues today. Thank you. <laughs> Education is about people, and it's the college's absolute pleasure to share this moment with three children who represent all future students. Kian Porter, Hudson Blair, and Abby Bennett are joining us today to present the President's Chain and Medallion. Kian is in kindergarten. He will bring the medallion forward and pass it to Hudson. <laughs> Hudson's in grade four, and he's going to pass the medallion to Abby, who is a grade 10 student, and she will present the medallion to the board chair. Thank you all very much. And the final formal step, Mr. Shufflebotham will now take the presidential oath. Dr. Chapman has the oath and she'll pass it to Graham Kelly. And Mr. Kelly, if you would please. Kevin. Shufflebotham, you have been selected by the Board of Governors to become the ninth president of Medicine Hat College. Do you, Kevin, swear that you will do the best of your skill and ability, truly and faithfully carry out the duties and powers of president of Medicine Hat College to enhance the institution's position in the cities of Medicine Hat and Brooks? all of the communities of southeastern Alberta, across Canada, and abroad. Yes, sir. Kevin, at the request of the Board of Governors and his chair, I hereby install you as president of Medicine Hat College. Kevin will now provide his first address as the president and CEO of Medicine Hat College. Well, if you ever get a chance to do this, I would certainly recommend it. Um, <laughs> I, um, I, I just feel incredibly blessed right now. And um, I'd just like to thank my family, friends, the community for showing up. It, um, it, it means so much to me and to hear these kind words. As I begin my comments, I, I really just wanted to acknowledge um, uh, how much your, your time that you, that you came here to share with me. 
and that where you choose to spend your time is truly a gift. Thank you so much for being part of the college. Thank you so much for being part of the community. And thank you for being here today. Again, it means a lot to me, and I really do appreciate it. Well, what can I say? It is such a privilege to be standing before you this afternoon. I am here accepting the honor and responsibility for guiding Medicine Hat College forward and building ever-increasing connectivity to the incredible people who live, grow, and celebrate this region. It is tempting to use this moment to tell you more about who I am. I could talk about where I grew up, where I went to school. I also have stories to tell about the people and places that are part of my history. I could even talk about the moments I have celebrated and the stumbles I have made. But all of that, however, could be found in a CV or a biography or listening to Glenn. <laughs> <laughs> it, is, it is, in fact, the past. And yes, the past is interesting and learning from history is vital. We must acknowledge the events that shaped our present reality and perceptions. We should feel good about the accomplishments of the college, the city, the region, and all the great people here today. Take a moment, if you would, please, just to reflect on all the positive in your life. Consider the experiences and the triumphs that brought you to this moment we're sharing today. Feels good, doesn't it? Now hold that feeling of strength and success as I shift to the real topic for us all, the future or more importantly, our future. Let's think together about a moment of celebration 10 years from today. What do we want for the college? What future are we planning for our communities? What careers will have come passe and which opportunities will emerge? How do we want to relate to one another? Will technology bind or divide us? If there's anyone here today that can answer these questions definitively, please let me know, because I have a place for you at the college. And while I admit I don't have the answers, I do know that planning and collaboration will help us move in the right direction. It is a pivotal, pivotal time for Medicine Hat College. As we begin the renewal of our strategic plan and our relationships, I look forward to making sure we're doing the best to serve the needs of our stakeholders on campus and in the community. Our plans need to begin with an honest look at who we are as an organization but we also need to know that the college cannot succeed by only looking inward. We must know and understand this region, your hopes, your fears, your dreams, and even more importantly, your goals. We need to understand the economy today and where it could possibly be tomorrow. We need to think about people, businesses, and the communities that we're in. We must be inclusive of ideas and possibilities. And only by understanding these connections can we ensure that the college is ready for what the future holds. In the past few weeks, I've had the opportunity to meet many of you in this room. And one reoccurring theme has been the desire to both collaborate and to share. That spirit is alive. And whether I'm speaking with elected officials, business leaders, or parents with an eye to the future, in the coming weeks, we will be asking you to participate to share your thoughts about this place we call home. And that information will inform the future plan for our college. If we do this well and we do it together, that view of our collective environment, our collective future, may also be used to help you with your future plans. I promise to engage you, and I promise to share what we learn. There is a truth to be faced when we go on this process. Simply, none of us knows what tomorrow is going to hold. We cannot control the environment around us. In fact, I promise you that in the span of 10 years, we will need all our strength, determination, creativity to face the challenges that we can't yet predict. But in that uncertainty, there's also opportunity. But we have the opportunity to approach each day to strive for the best. We have the opportunity to approach each day with a desire to learn and to grow. And we have the opportunity to connect with people and combine our energy to do more together than any single person could ever do. Together, we are truly stronger. In the time I have been here, I have seen the strength of the college and in the region. 
a gusty, we'll get it done attitude, full of determination, resilience, and confidence. I can feel the pride you have in the past, and I share your excitement for the future. These are the assets that we have to move us forward, and I invite you to speak with vision, speak openly, and work with energy. Now is our time. In closing, you have all been so gracious in your welcome to Corrine and me. We have strong family roots in the region, and now we have a home among you. Thank you. Thank you. We do have a small token for you, Kevin. Yeah. Well, thank you, everyone. That brings us to the conclusion of our ceremony this afternoon. I'd like to thank you all for attending, our provincial and regional leaders, our partners from campuses across Alberta, and to every member of the Medicine Hat College community. Thank you for your attendance. It was truly a pleasure to be here, to see you here today, and we hope we see most of you here on Friday for Convocation. Guests and friends, please rise as the platform party exits, but also do join us in Centennial Hall for some refreshments. Thank you. Thank you all.